This video explains the service manager. Every component, including the database, is a process and considered a service that can be controlled with a command, a shell script, or an executable. The service manager allows you to invoke these processes through their assigned file paths, which means it can effectively control atomic services. We install the service manager using the same approach, copy, unzip, and untar, which creates a bin directory and some configuration files. We'll briefly consider the service manager's INI file and what it contains. Then we look at two equally important files, .smd and .smc, which contain the service manager's service definitions and auto start commands respectively. Finally, we'll start the service manager and show how to use it. In our infrastructure diagram, we're installing the service manager on the AE host. A service manager can only control services on the same local host. This instance of the service manager can manage AE processes since they're local. It will not manage the database, which is on a remote system. This being said, service managers are networked, provided you have the service manager's UI called the dialog. This is only available on Windows operating systems, but it will give you full control of remote services. We'll cover this in a future video. Finally, Service Manager requires CAPKI everywhere it's running. The Service Manager is a process called UCBSMGR. It has a configuration INI, but it doesn't require a ton of configuration, at least initially. The Service Manager lets you control any service installed locally. The tool is fairly intuitive. It converts processes into services by sourcing its .smd definitions file. Consider the Automation Engine CP process, which we explained earlier. We can add the CP process and its location to the SMD or definitions file. When you start the service manager, it sources this file and converts the CP process into a service definition, which means it can be managed interactively. We'll explain how in a minute. Service managers can only manage local services. You can't use the service manager on the AE system to define database services unless AE and the DB are installed on the same computer, which is unlikely. Service Manager has a user interface called the SM Dialog. The dialog sources the SMD file and displays the services graphically, providing interactive start and stop capabilities. The dialog is only available on Windows, but it can source any SMD file in your atomic landscape through the manager's networking capabilities, effectively letting you start and stop services on remote computers. Finally, Service Manager has a command file, the .smc. .smc contains auto start commands for your services. It can be configured directly in the dialog. Let's explain. Say we have three hosts, one for the AE system, one with a Unix agent, and one with a Windows agent. We install Service Manager on each. This is required if you need remote access. Each manager's SMD file contains the list of local services. The Service Manager on the AE host only manages AE services, and this is true for the other two as well. Then we start the dialog on the Windows system, you now have a UI that gives you control over all three service managers. This means you can connect to the AE service manager and start and stop AE processes. Once configured, the entire circuit is transparent to the user. Let's start by installing the service manager on the AE host. The procedure is the same. We copy the zip tar file from the install package, unzip and untar. Then we rename the INI file in the bin directory, where you also find the SMD file. So you have to rename both. For a simple test install, you don't need to make changes to the Service Manager INI. Here are the key settings for the INI. First, the Service Manager has a port. That port is commonly set to 8871 by default, and there's no need to change it unless there's a specific reason. Then we have the Destination section. Destination can be any term. By default, it's been set to UC4 for decades, and there's really no need to change it. Inside the section, you find two settings, def file and CMD file. 
which are the names and locations of the definitions and command files respectively. Note the star own naming. This points to the current directory. The use of star own is widespread in atomic configuration files, and you can keep it this way. The names of the two files must match the destination string. If the destination is UC4, then the two files should be called uc4.smd and uc4.smc. Finally, check the CAPKI section. If the fields aren't populated with TLS information, it means CAPKI was improperly installed or its libraries aren't recognized by Service Manager. You should reinstall CAPKI. Let's explain. We've color-coded each file, red for definitions and blue for commands. When you start the Service Manager process, it looks at the INI file. The INI contains references to SMD and SMC in the destination section. The definitions file uses simple syntax involving setting file paths and commands as variables and then defining matching services. Here's an example of a CP. It sets a var cp underscore start cmd, the start path which is defined in the SMD, the dash i option we described earlier, the INI file and the port. Then we have a service definition. If you want to start two CPs automatically, you should have a define CP1 and define CP2 and use the start CMD and start path variables. This works for every service, agents, AWI, even the database. Each time, the syntax varies a bit but operates along the same principles. The SMC is even more simple. You simply set a create command, then the name of the destination, then the service. We recommend making ample use of the wait command with parameters and seconds so as to paste the starting of your services. Starting everything at the same time can cause major malfunctions, especially with the Java processes. When you start the service manager process, the SMD file listed in the INI kicks into action and defines the services you've created. Those services now exist, but they're not started. Then, the SMC file listed in the INI starts the services automatically using the definitions from SMD. As a rule, Atomic recommends not editing the SMC file manually, and this is the reason the file doesn't exist initially. It's better to set auto start of a service in the service manager dialog. When you set it there, the inputs are reflected automatically in SMC, even if the service manager is remote. This being said, we currently do not have an available dialog, but there's really nothing from preventing you from creating an SMC file manually, and so we'll do this next. Here are the code snippets. First, we configure the definitions file. We're going to set two WPs, one JCP, two CPs, one JWP, and one REST. Then we create and configure the SMC file. We'll do the same, but we won't start REST. When the service manager is started, those services will auto start. If you want to create multiple services for a designated process, then you append a number. If you want two WPs, which is standard practice, you create UC4 WP1 and WP2. The SMD file can be a bit overwhelming at first, but it's actually simple. First, it sets a variable for the service manager start path by setting the bin directory. Then it sets variables for the CP and WP services using the start path variable and invoking the executables. If this isn't familiar, then you should revisit the contents of the automation engine. Then it sets variables for the Java-based processes, JCP and JWP, using the same methods. Then we define what it means to start and stop a service. We recommend not changing these lines, at least for now. Then we define the services. We said we wanted two WPs, so we define a service UC4 WP1 and WP2. We comment out the other WPs using the exclamation point. We stated we wanted a JCP, a JWP, and a REST. We also want two CPs, so we keep these lines. Note that the order in which these services are listed is irrelevant because the definitions file doesn't execute anything at the system level, it only defines services. The order in which they auto start will be set by the commands file. Finally, we have a bunch of agents which are defined by default, a Unix agent, a database agent, and a database service. These processes are not present on the system and so we can disable them. You can of course change the definitions anytime you want, you'll just need to restart the service manager when you do so. The commands file has weights to ensure a slow, deliberate start for each process. 
Then we auto start two WPs, the JCP, two CPs, and the JWP in no rests. This is consistent with the order we discussed in the video on AE. Whatever you do, always make sure WP starts first. Finally, we start Service Manager. The syntax is the same, but we have to specify the destination at the end. The SMC will start the AE processes, which you can check with the PSEF grep UCSRV command. We'll take a more visual approach and show the logs. On the right, we're in the Service Manager's bin directory and we're going to start it. On the left, we show the AE's temp directory. When we start Service Manager, the AE processes will start, which will generate logs for each. Finally, we can show the service manager log and make sure everything is working properly.